so students today we are going to discuss about three zone distance protection of transmission line in previous class we have discussed about uh, uh, distance protection but one disadvantage with the conventional and distance protection is that a distance protection will not be able to protect 100% length of the line because due to inaccuracies in the relay elements and the instrument transformers the relay might not be able to distinguish between 99% and 101% of the length of the line which it is supposed to protect so for that some portion might be left unprotected so this difficulty with the distance protection can be eliminated by three zone distance protection where every point on the line is protected by a three layer of protection okay so the funda of the concept of this protection is that there will be three zones of protection first zone is in the impedance diagram first, first zone of protection is represented by impedance z1 with the operating time t1 so if any fault occurs in this zone uh, which uh, suppose a uh, impedance of fault location impedance between the fault location and the relay impedance between the fault location and the relay if it lies lies below z1 then that will be covered by z1 right and it will clear the fault fault within the time operating time t1 if z1 fails to operate z1 is the impedance covered by the first relay so i am just simply referring it to z1 if z1 fails to operate then the second layer you can see in the this concentric circles that z2 also covers z1 as a second layer of protection so if the first layer of protection fails to operate the second layer of protection which is provided by element z2 will come into action but that, that will take time t2 to complete its operation where t2 is greater than t1 that means z2 will clear the fault in a larger amount of time then again if z2 fails the third layer of protection will come into action provided by z3 which is covering a greater radius right z1 is less than z2 which is less than z3 so the uh, more coverage is provided by z3 but the operating time is also the highest for that element okay so if primary fails the if uh, means if any fault occurs the primary will provide protection within the shortest amount of time if primary fails the secondary layer will come into action but in a greater amount of operating time if secondary fails then the third layer will come into action and that will clear the fault within the means highest permissible time which is t3 okay so this concept is utilized in this three zone distance protection here we can see a uh, transmission line section represented by a b and b a b and c d there are two adjoining lines okay be, uh, be clear about that now it is desired to provide for this whole line section a b and c d using three zone distance protection okay now on the both ends of the lines say for a b similarly for c d also on the two ends of the line there are relays okay and this relay is uh, being denoted by one z one this relay is denoted by uh, z b see this is denoted by z a this is denoted by ZB. Relay at end C is denoted by ZC. Relay at D is denoted by ZD. Okay, and each relay is having three layers of protection provided by three elements. So first element of relay A means ZA is denoted by Z1A. Okay, second element of relay a is denoted by z2a but for z2a to complete its operation it will take a high amount of time this is the operating time axis so z1a is the list taking list uh, operating time z2a second uh, element 
is taking more amount of time okay and z3 is the third layer third element of relay za which is having the highest amount of time similarly for relay at b also zb is the first layer z1b second layer z2b third layer will be somewhere here which is not shown here similarly for zc also first layer z1c second layer z2c and z3c will be somewhere here okay similarly for zd also z1d first layer z2d second element z3d third element of relay zd fine so let's come to the first uh, relay z1a so z1a corresponds to 80% length of the line ab it will cover up to 80% length of the line and it is the high speed zone operating time is the least in this zone up to 80% length of the line generally it is covered up to 80% okay <coughs> so uh, the first zone as you can see uh, from whatever we have discussed in last class it does not provide protection for full length of the line not for 100 percent up to generally for 80 percent okay and the second zone of relay za which is z2a will cover the rest 20 percent of the line and also 20 percent of the adjoining line okay so z2a is covering the remaining 20 percent of the line also 20 percent of the adjoining line the third zone of the relay z a which is z 3 a is covering the rest of the adjoining line similarly if we go to relay z b first zone is covering up to 80 percent of the line from the relay b side then rest 20 percent of uh, the remaining line the remaining 20 percent also 20 percent of the adjoining line if there is any more line here okay then the rest of the line will be covered by z3a the z3b similarly if we go to relay zd first layer or first element z1d is covering up to 80 percent of the line which is the high speed zone the remaining 20 percent is covered by the second zone of the relay zd which is z2d in this much amount of time and also 20 percent of the adjoining line the third zone of the relay zd which is z3d is covering the remaining of the adjoining line okay so suppose uh, a fault occurs uh, in this section uh, relay in case a fault occurs okay in the section a b then relay A will operate when the operating time elapses corresponding to the ordinate Z2B. So you can see if in the remaining 20% fault occurs, okay, Z1 to Z2A will provide protection but in this amount of time. But this is greater than this amount of time which is provided by the first element of Zb which is Z1B. So Z1B will clear the fault this is the first layer protection for any point in this 20 percent length okay so first layer is provided by z1b second layer z2b uh, and third layer will be z3d like that so in this manner in this fashion every point is protected by at least three layers of protection you can s verify suppose a fault occurs here okay so first layer will be protected by z1d second layer will be protect the second layer will be z 2c which is the third element of zc a third layer will be z3a which is provided by the third element of za okay so in this manner every point on this line is protected by three zone protection okay that's why it is called three zone protection so generally the third zone of any relay third zone z3a z3b z3c z3d provides backup protection uh, generally they are they work as backup protection for the adjoining line okay. 
so this distance protection can be realized by three types of relays impedance relay reactance relay and more relay this impedance relay and reactance relay these two are based on impedances they will measure the impedance if the measured impedance between the fault location and the relay position is less than or equal to the threshold value of the relay which is uh, manually in given then the relay will operate and the first two type are non directional but more relay is a directional type so it will measure the impedance between the fault location and the relay as well as it will uh, it will monitor the power flow direction if it power, if power flows in a reverse direction and also if impedance uh, impedance lies below or equal to the threshold value, value of the relay the more relay will operate but the first two impedance and this uh, reactance relay they are non directional relays okay so first coming to the impedance relay a impedance relay responds to the impedance seen by the relay if the impedance seen by the relay is less than its settings then the relay will operate the impedance relays are non directional relays and therefore need a directional relay with them if we intend to use them with uh, as, uh, with directional features so we need a directional element with this particular impedance relay similarly for reactance relay also because this reactance and impedance relay are non directional in nature so if we want to have it a directional feature we must add additional directional some element okay so this is a this is the impedance characteristic of three zone protection provided by impedance relay Simil, uh, just like i have told you previously z1 is less than z2 less than z3 this is impedance diagram okay r versus z then uh, this means uh, this uh, uh, rx diagram okay rx so it will be z okay so z1 is less than z2 less than z3 and t1 which is operating time of z1 is less than t2 t2 is operating time of z2 and t2 is again less than t3 t3 is the operating time of z3 okay so this is the contact circuit for three zone impedance relay okay so the parallel lines in the figure represents the contacts of various units we need a directional relay in addition to this uh, uh, impedance relay because impedance relays are itself it is a non directional relay so an additional directional relay is used for three zone protection okay z1 z2 z3 are the three elements and uh, t2 and t3 t2 is the operating unit or the timing unit of z2 t3 is the operating time uh, op uh, operating unit sorry uh, timing unit for unit z3 okay so here since z2 z3 unit starts when the fault lies in any zone 1 2 or 3 because z3 is the highest so z3 will start as soon as fault lies whether it is in z1 or z2 or z3 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 will start because it will come to know that there is a fault within its jurisdiction okay <coughs> so z3 should operate first but we know that operating time of z1 is the smallest right t1 is the smallest next is t2 next is t3 so although z2 z3 will come to know that there is a fault within its zone but because if fault occurs within z1 
only z1 will start first because its operating time is the least one fine and if z1 operates satisfactorily the faulty section will be isolated from the source in case the fault is not cleared by the element z1 the second element z2 will cover this fault if there is any fault in the z1 because that impedance will be less than z2 okay so that will be the second layer protection if z2 fails to operate then this impedance is obviously less than z3 so third layer will come into action and that will clear the fault in the operating time t3 okay next is reactance relay reactance relay responds only to a reactance component of the impedance so impedance is r plus zx but relay reactance relay will correspond to only to the reactance component of the impedance a reactance relay is a non directional relay as i have told you and the directional unit of the type used along with the impedance relay cannot be used for reasons discussed earlier so a more relay is used as the starting relay along with the reactance relay okay so the more relay what is the job of the more relay the more relay prevents the operation of the reactance unit under load conditions also it gives protection for the third zone of scheme so here this is rx diagram so the re reactance relay three zone reactance relay will look into only the uh, reactance component it will measure only the reactance if a fault lies in the zone of x1 the first element will provide protection okay if first element fails to operate this will be again under the zone of second zone which is provided by x2 so this x2 will come into action if x2 fails to provide to clear the fault here then the third zone provided by more relay which is having a impedance of z which is the highest okay x1 is less than x2 x2 is less than z so z the third zone will come into action and clear the fault fine so this is the uh, characteristic of the three zone reactance relay and this is the contact circuit okay so the contact circuit is connected between the dc supply terminals plus minus okay in case a fault takes place in the first zone then all three units x1 x2 and uh, your s s is the more relay which is providing the third zone of protection z so x2 is the second zone x1 is the first zone x1 is having operating time t1 x2 is having operating time t2 x3 is uh, s is having operating time t3 okay so in case a fault occurs in the first zone then all the three units uh, will start but because t1 which is operating time of x1 is the least one so x1 will clear the fault and it will trip the circuit breaker okay if x1 fails to operate as i have told you then the second zone will come into action if second zone fails the third zone will come into action fine last one is the more relay more relay i have just told you that it is a directional relay it does not require additional unit for its directional characteristic okay so all the three units here m1 m2 m3 they are the directional units m1 is having operating time t1 m2 is having operating time t2 m3 is having operating time t3 okay these are the timing units for m2 this is timing unit for t, uh, m3 
T3 is timing unit for M3. Okay. The operation of this circuit is similar to the circuits of the reactance relay. So, Z1 is the fir first uh, zone impedance provided by M1. Z2 is the impedance covered by the second zone which is M2 and Z3 which is not shown here, Z3 is the impedance covered by the third unit which is M3. Okay. So, M1 will cover up to Z1, M2 will cover up to Z2 and M3 will cover up to Z3 just like the previous cases. Okay. So, coming to the application of distance relay, uh, I can mention a few since the resistance of the ground is a variable quantity, a ground fault relay should be independent of resistance. Consequently, reactant relays are normally preferred for ground fault relaying. For phase fault protection, its type has certain disadvantages and disadvantages. And for short transmission lines, reactance type relay is used because more of the line can be protected at high speed. Okay. And more relay type protection, more relay three zone protection is mostly suited for long lines where there are normally more chances of severe synchronizing power sources, charges on the system. Okay. So, the for these benefits, the distance relays are preferred for transmission line. Okay. So, I have one homework for you, carrier current protection, which is another type of protection for transmission line. It is also called as carrier added protection of transmission line, where modulation of signal is done it is well explained here you study it yourself okay and the next i will be sharing notes on uh, digital protection okay uh, numerical relays so i conclude here for today thank you